small minutes that I have left is a synthetic compound in which we have been able to uh, eliminate or not to have CNS effects of this type, but this compound causes all those effects that we just saw uh, with 2-AG, and we call this compound HU211, called dexanabinol, and this compound is now in phase three clinical trials as a neuroprotective agent. It has been tested uh, and published on about 110 patients now. It has concluded phase three clinical trials with 850 patients. We're waiting for the six months after the end of the trial so that we can analyze the results. We sincerely hope that they will be positive. And if that is the case, then we shall have the first drug on the market which will be protective, which will help reduce the damage caused by um, uh, car accidents and so on. And I can view in the future, hopefully, that the same drug or a very closely related drug may be used in stroke because the basic me mechanisms are more or less the same. So maybe, just maybe, we shall have something that will reduce the damage, not just of brain damage because of trauma, uh, car accident or whatever, but also for stroke. And we have very little to use nowadays for those compounds. I'll just uh, jump over the, these things. This is the dexanabinol, which has also been shown by a German group, not uh, associated with ours, that it works on NF-kappa B, that particular compound formed in the body which causes uh, additional damage in this case by moving into um, uh, cells of the brain. And these are the things that have been seen with 2 h 211 and this is that it reduces the intracranial pressure. It reduces the amount of water, of the edema that is formed, just like we saw with 2 ag And in a neurological test, which is called the Glasgow uh, scale, we see that it, uh, there is great improvement, particularly in those severe cases. So I told my neurologist, the neurologist at Watson, that look, if you have a case in which a person with a mild injury comes in, why don't you make the mild injury much stronger and then the compound will work better? He was not very happy with it. <laughs> uh, and let me end with something that has uh, being published by a German group and by our group. It will take another two minutes. Um, quite a bit of what we know should be forgotten, especially things that have to do with trauma. And it can be shown in mice. For example, a German group showed that if they condition an animal to uh, trauma when they hear some kind of noise. The animal hears noise and gets a shock. Hears noise and gets a shock. So he's uh, conditioned, the animal is conditioned to the noise and to the trauma coming immediately, the shock coming immediately after the noise. So uh, these are uh, uh, animals that are already conditioned. They hear the noise and they freeze because they know that the shock will come. But if a shock doesn't come, they slowly, within a few days, they slowly uh, get out of this condition. Uh, this is what happens with all of us, otherwise we won't be able to survive, I suppose. But if the cannabinoid system, if the cannabinoid system is destroyed, let's say we take knockout mice, this particular thing does not happen. And here you have two types of mice. The mice with the red do not forget their conditioning. They stay that way for, for a long, long time. They remember, they continue to remember that they, if there is noise, they have to freeze because there will be a shock. But those animals that have a cannabinoid system which works, then they will slowly forget, and these are the animals on the lower part. So we thought that maybe we can work with the cannabinoids. I mean, th they show that the system plays. What about <coughs> cannabinoids? So a good friend of mine, uh, Dr. Parker in Canada, uh, took animals and conditioned them to uh, uh, something which is uh, uh, very widely used in, uh, in um, uh, psychology, into experimental psychology, and this is called place preference. She has uh, animals 
moving to one or two places. It's called a place preference. One has small holes and the other has uh, small scratches, if you wish. And they can differentiate that in these two places. But when they go to the uh, place with the small holes, they are given something they enjoy, let's say cocaine or amphetamine. They like that. So as soon as they have uh, uh, been conditioned to that, they always go to the place with the small holes because they know that something uh, pleasant for them uh, will be given. Uh, so they are conditioned. That, that's place preference. So if you then don't give them anything, they will still go to the place they prefer because they are already conditioned. And uh, if we give them CBD or THC for that matter, if we give them one of these two compounds, they forget their conditioning. And here, for example, in the first two uh, things that you see, the white one and the blue one, you see the amount of, uh, uh, of uh, the time uh, that these animals will go to the place they prefer, the place placement they prefer because they will get uh, something they like. But if they get cannabidiol, they won't go there more. They will just go, 50% will go to the one place and 50% will go to the other place. And the same is for THC. We try that, we try that with cocaine, we try that with amphetamine. The same, both uh, cannabidiol and THC cause uh, these animals to forget to block their conditioning. Now, uh, uh, is that important? I think it is very important. We have diseases, we have situations in which we do not uh, uh, find a way to stop remembering, to forget. I'm finishing. And the reason, uh, for example, in the post-traumatic stress disorder, people continue to remember a trauma which in a most people will be forgotten after a few days, a few months, depending on the trauma, but it is ultimately forgotten. Otherwise, we'll, we won't survive. In a few people, th this does not happen. They wake in the middle of the night with hallucinations and a terrible situation, and there are very few things, except psychotherapy, that will help them. So chances are, chances are that this uh, treatment may help. Uh, people with post-traumatic stress disorder. We have started a clinical trial and I sincerely hope that we shall be able to uh, help uh, patients with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and uh, possibly certain forms of chronic pain, possibly certain types, uh, types of phobia. Well, I want to thank my group. These are two groups. We are a mixed bag. We have people from abroad. We have um, Jews and Arabs. We have Jews of all kinds, we have Arabs of all kinds, and we live happily together, and we, which is not unfortunately the case um, uh, uh, throughout Israel, but this is one place of sanity, and I hope that it will uh, uh, be infectious. Uh, and these are many of my collaborators. As you s I just said in a few words, maybe, uh, that we work in both in chemistry, biochemistry, pharmacology, and the clinic, and this involves a lot of people, a lot of my friends. And uh, some of them are pharmacologists, others are clinicians. And there are a lot of collaborators abroad and for the specific reason that if we want to do a test, to want to perform a, something that is of importance, instead of us learning the techniques or learning everything these people have invested years in learning, it's much easier to go and have a coffee with him and try to, uh, do, to collaborate. And we have found that this is one of the great pleasures of being in academia. Uh, we work with a lot of people in a lot of places, including people here in Richmond, not far away, in all over the world. And uh, I thank them and I thank you.